Now, in order to get the equations of motion for a fluid particle, we will apply Newton's second law of motion, to a differential fluid element and express the result in its most general form. But before we do this, however, we must first formulate expressions that represent the effect of a differential force, acting on a differential area. As shown here, differential force acts on this differential area. This differential force will have a normal component, and two shear components. The normal component creates a normal stress, on the area, defined as. Similarly for the shear stresses. The first letter Z in the subscript notation, represents the outward normal direction, that defines the direction of the area. For example, look, our area is perpendicular to the Z axis, so we write first letter Z on every stresses and the second letter represents the direction of the stress. Normal stress acts on z-axis, tau z-x, acts on x-axis and tau z-y, acts on y-axis. At each point in the fluid there will be a stress field, that defines these stresses. And because this field changes from one point, to the next, the forces these stresses produce on a fluid particle, must account for these changes. For example, Consider the free body diagram of the fluid particle. These arrows are the stress component that acts. Now take the stress component that acts in x direction only. These are forces arrows, created by stresses, and it acts on x direction. Force is stress times area. The resultant surface force in the, x direction created by normal forces. Similarly, the surface force in the x direction, created by tangential forces. Again, the surface force in the x direction, created by tangential force on upper and lower surfaces. The resultant surface force in x direction would be. By collecting terms this can be simplified. And in a similar manner. The resultant surface forces produced by the stresses, in the y and z directions, can also be obtained. We have. Apart from these forces, there is also the body force due to the weight of the particle. If delta m is the particle mass, the force would be mass times acceleration due to gravity. Now simplify mass as density times volume. To further generalize this development, we will assume the x, y, Z axes, have some arbitrary orientation, so that the weight will have components along each axis. Therefore, the sum of all the body and surface force components, acting on the fluid particle are. With these forces established, we can now apply Newton's second law of motion, to the particle. Provided the particle's velocity, is expressed as a velocity field. Then the material derivative is used, to determine the acceleration. Thus. When we substitute, these body and surface force, factor out the volume, and then use the velocity field, the x, y, z component of these equation would become. In the next section, we will apply these equations, to study an ideal fluid. And generate, Bernoulli's equation.